and today we are here to discuss the chapter light. So what comes to your mind when it comes to seeing the objects around you? You might think that we see objects around with our eyes and if the eyes are taken up from us we cannot see the objects but with eyes we can surely see the objects. But can that happen in a dim room? Does light also play a role in your seeing the other objects? Yes it does. Light is the thing the you know the principal thing that helps us to see other objects because because of the light there is you know um, the object reflects the light and it comes to our eyes and hence we can see that object so now we are going to discuss what is reflection and before that i'm going to tell you how do we perceive light do we perceive light as a straight line as a wave or as you know uh, a lot of particles running together simultaneously so, for Einstein said that for different uses, light is taken into all the three forms. So we can channelize the light as a straight line, as a wave, and also as a uh, you know array of particles. So in which situations do we take? In normal reflection, we can take the light to be as a straight line. In to explain the process of diffraction, that is when the light. Uh, uh, goes on to an opaque object it does not uh, you know travels through it but bends upon its edges so this is also known as diffraction this cannot be explained by taking light as a straight line so it is taken as a wave but when it happens to interact with the matter around in our society, in our surroundings we take the uh, light as a ray uh, not as a ray, nor as a wave of particle, not as a wave, but you know, uh, array of particles, a lot of particles running together in a line. So we take the light as that. So um, light cannot, you know, uh, it's still not discovered in which way does the light behave. Does it behave like a wave, a uh, straight line or as particles? So now going deep into that, which you are going to study in 11th class, we are going to go and continue with our course. So now I'm going to tell you what is reflection, as you all know, that is the bouncing back of light through a polished surface or striking upon a polished surface. So why does this happen? Why does the light bounce off? And why does the um, light always travel in a straight path? That is one thing to that. You know, there is one uh, law which you are going to study, of course, in 11th or 12th. But the law is quite simple. It says that light is in a hurry. So light, light tends to take the shortest path. But as it uh, travels in a straight line, it gets bounced off back by the reflecting surface. So that it has to be a polish and it does not have to have a lot of friction so that there is not irregular deflection, uh, reflection, but regular reflection. So this is all about it. So there are two laws for reflection as you know. The first one is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So let us channelize like this. This is a mirror, MN, and there is a normal upon it. And an incidence ray is coming like this. So it's going to balance back like this. So the angle of the incident ray, this is the incident ray, this was the normal. So the angle of the incidence ray to the normal is going to be equal to the angle of reflection to the normal on the other side. So sometimes we, you know, the questions tend to confuse you. Whether it is the angle of incidence or the angle with the mirror. So if we are going to see the angle with the mirror, this is going to be your mirror. This is going to be your incident ray. So this is going to be your angle with the mirror. But if they are saying that it's the angle of incidence, then the angle of incidence as you know is the angle with the normal. So that is a coin kind of you know confusion that is created but you've got to be confirmed about that. The angle with the normal is known as the angle of incidence or the angle with the normal on the other side is known as the angle of reflection. While the angle with the mirror is the angle that the incident ray or the refract reflected ray form with the mirror. Okay so now we're going to discuss about uh, one of the most common types of mirror. That is what you see in your daily life. That is what you use for grooming purposes and all kinds of staring to the mirror. So that is the plane mirror. What kind of image does plane mirror form? It forms a virtual image. What is a virtual image? A virtual image is an image that cannot be obtained on a screen. 
and it forms a real it, it forms a virtual image which cannot be obtained on a screen and it forms a you know um, erect image that is not upside down whenever you go and seeing yourself in the mirror do you see yourself upside down never so it's always erect then the other thing is that you know the uh, it is of the same the image is from the same distance from the mirror as you are for example this is the mirror and i'm standing two centimeter away from the mirror then my image is also going to stand two centimeter away from the mirror so these are all the characteristics of the image formed by a plane mirror now go on to now let's go on to another degree of mirror that is the curved mirror so one of the most common types of the curved mirror are the spherical mirror there are two types of spherical mirrors one is convex concave and the other one is convex so you know we sometimes tend to get confused which one is concave which one is convex because both of them you know seem like each other so there is one trick for remembering this that is whenever you form like this is going to be your hand is going to be like this is going to be in the form of a circle so your left hand is going to represent a convex mirror so this side it's a convex mirror and your right hand on the other side is going to represent a concave mirror so right for concave and left for convex that forms a circle convex and concave so that you can easily understand so what is the definition of convex that is the mirror which has the uh, the which has which is spherical on the outside and the concave mirror is the mirror which is spherical on the inside or you can say it is bulging outwards the convex mirror is bulging outwards and the con uh, concave mirror is bulging uh, inwards okay so this is all about convex and concave so um, uh, you know uh, they form like this do we have some journal terms related to these mirrors yes we do have and what is going to be the difference for the terms between the concave mirror and the convex mirror so let's get started first we are going to see the pole of the mirror the pole of the mirror is the center point of the mirror so this is going to be the pole of the mirror in this case this is going to be the pole of the mirror and in the convex case this is going to be the pole of the mirror now um, the pole of the mirror is uh, you know same for both the mirrors because it does not considers any um, it, it does not goes outside the mirror but when we go outside the mirror and see what is focus then it's different for both of the mirrors focus is a point where rays traveling parallel to the mirror meet at uh, to the principal axis meet at the point this point is known as focus but before discussing that i first want to tell you what is the uh, center of curvature what is the radius radius of curvature and what is the principal axis it might seem a lot of jumble of words but this is quite easy trust me center of curvature so uh, you know that this is a spherical mirror this concave mirror uh, convex mirror is going to be a spherical mirror it is obviously a part of a greater circle a, a greater sphere i'm sorry a greater sphere so is it is a part of a greater sphere and the you know the center of that sphere of which this mirror is a part so this is going to be my sphere for example and this mirror is a part of that sphere so the center of this sphere is known as the center of curvature and as you know the you know from the center to the point on the on the sphere it is known as the radius of curvature so the radius of curvature is quite clear the line the line joining the center of curvature and the pole of the mirror is called the radius of curvature or you can define it in and get another way that is the radius of the sphere of which this mirror is a part is known as radius of curvature so after that we uh, that we are going to discuss what is principal axis now that seems quite a uh, heavy term principal axis it's quite simple principal axis is a line that me, uh, that passes through the center of curvature the focus and the pole so it's quite simple the focus the center of curvature and the pole so i was discussing something of uh, focus you think i remember so this is going to be my principal axis it's going to pass through the radius of curvature and the pole so if a ray is traveling parallel 
to my uh, uh, principal axis. This is principal axis. So if a ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis, it tends to pass through the focus. This point through which the ray parallel to the principal axis passes is known as the focus. So the focus for the concave mirror is in the front of the mirror and for the convex mirror, it is at the back of the mirror. Sorry, at the back of the mirror, I'm really sorry. In the front and at the back. So now we have some more, um, you know, laws which you can say um, that are for the image formation. What kind of an image will be formed by the concave mirror or the convex mirrors? So first we're going to uh, see around these laws. Um, um, but before that, I want to tell you one more term that is quite a small term inside the book and its name is aperture. What is aperture? Aperture is the diameter of the reflecting surface. So this is the reflecting surface. Its diameter is going to be my aperture. And then another thing that is to be remembered is that uh, radius of curvature is equals to 2s. That is to focus. So focus into 2 is equals to radius of curvature or half the radius of curvature is equals to focus. But remember, this is only for the mirrors of small aperture. That is small diameter. So now we are going to go and concentrate on the laws that, uh, you know, um, on which on which basis the different type of images are formed in the concave mirror as well as the convex mirrors. So first law is that a ray traveling parallel to the principal focus will pa uh, parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus that I've already told you. And the vice versa is also true that if an image passes through the principal focus then it is going to travel parallel to the principal axis but friends did you notice something that it's only for the concave mirror what about our other friend that is the convex mirror in the convex mirror the ray that travel parallel to the principal axis appear to diverge from the focus so that is kind you know uh, for example this is it's going to go like this. So this is uh, going to be connected to the focus. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's uh, seeming like it's diverging from the focus. Actually, it's not touching the focus. But if you meet, uh, if you extend that line, that is refracted ray, if you extend that refracted ray, it's going to meet the focus. So that is our point, that it diverges the incident ray. Then the second law is that, you know, if... Uh, if a line, uh, if a ray passes through the center of curvature, it retraces its path. Or if it is directed for our friend convex, if it is directed towards the center of curvature, then it retraces its path. So the same. If it is passing or if it is directed towards the center of curvature, it's going to retrace its path. So something comes in my mind. When does it retrace its path? Yeah, when we, you know, uh, when we, uh, when the incident ray is 90 to the mirror. So yeah, you're right. So if uh, the center of curvature acts as a normal, the radius of curvature acts as a normal. And uh, so when, uh, uh, when a line passes through the center of curvature, it retraces its path because it is drawn along the normal. And why did I use the term radius of curvature here? Because you all know that in a circle, any line that joins the boundary to the center is going to be the radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature is uh, going to act as a normal. And when you have an incident ray towards the normal, it's going to retrace its path. That is what is, you know, um, in these mirrors as well. Then the last law is that a ray that is incident obliquely will be reflected, or reflected obliquely. So what is the meaning of obliquely? That is to an angle. For example, if my uh, incident angle or the angle of incidence is 30 degree, what will be my reflected angle? That would be 30. So obliquely, obliquely. So if an uh, ray is incident on a reflecting surface obliquely, it's going to be reflected obliquely. So this word obliquely is going to get in your mind. Then now we are going to discuss image formation in the concave mirrors. 
So, you know, one thing I had seen my classmates that they were like, you know, um, trying to mug up all the things. Like, this is going to be highly diminished. Uh, same size, I don't remember. So this was their reaction after, you know, remembering that brown table, that big one, and they couldn't remember it. So a very easy way to get all of the ray diagrams clear in your mind is using my fast forward technique. So before, you know, constructing the ray diagrams, I want to tell you one thing. That though an object, you know, it emits many of the incidence ray, we take only two incident rays so that there is a clarity of the ray diagram. This can also be asked in the, you know, exam. Does an object emit only two incident rays or does it emit a lot of them? Then why do we take only two of them in the ray diagram? So I've already explained you why. So now we are going to discuss, you know, how, how instead of, you know, mugging up the table, we can do it in our own nice way. So first, uh, diagram is quite clear in your mind because I've already explained you what is focus. A ray, that, that is an object. For example, there is the mirror kept. So it's gonna, you know, emit two rays like this. Let's see. So there are two of them are gonna pass through focus. So they're gonna pass through like this. So this is going to be our focus. So add the focus. And how does, you know, this, uh, you know, this image appear to you? This might image, you know, highly diminished, point-sized. So this is going to be very small. And the second one, when it is at back of the um, center of curvature, then it's gonna, you know, then again you emit, you just use the two laws. First, try, okay, where to try? Okay, first ray, I'll pass it through focus. Second ray, I'll pass it to center, uh, center of curvature. Oh, the two rays are meeting. That means the image would be formed. So the image in this case would be formed between F and C. And here it would be, you know, uh, diminished. And it would be real and inverted in all the cases except the last one. Now going on to the third. That is a quite interesting one, I say. That is upon the center of curvature. Again, I will apply my mind. No, I cannot pass a ray from the center of curvature because my object itself is on the center of curvature. So what to do? Okay, I'll construct two parallel rays. I'll, no, 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 no. I can do one thing. I will construct a ray parallel and it will pass through focus. Then I'll construct a ray passing through focus and it will be parallel. So these two rays are meeting. One image will be formed. So it's, this image is going to be or on that same location that is on center of curvature is going to be of the same size. Now we go on to even more interesting things that is between F and C. So again, I would use my mind. Yeah, I can extend the ray from C. Okay, then what to do? I will make a ray parallel to the focus and uh, to the principal axis and it will pass through focus. Okay, it's meeting somewhere. It's going to be an large image and it's going to be at the back of the sea. Now we are going to go and get another very, you know, interesting one. So two cases are quite interesting and quite easy the, on the center of curvature and on the focus. So on the focus, I cannot do anything. I can practically, practically only do this much that I'll extend um, uh, one ray from the, you know, uh, parallel to the principal axis it's going to pass through the focus and through the center of curvature they are never going to meet so they are going to meet at infinity so um, that image formed will be highly enlarged then the last one is quite easy and it's you know exceptional kind this is going to be remembered between focus and pole the image formed will be virtual and erect so this is the exception comes here. Real and inverted, real and inverted, real and inverted, real and inverted, real and inverted. But now we have virtual and erect. What we've been looking for, my friends, through this session, the exception has come. So that was quite dramatizing, but let's continue. So if we place an object between the focus and the pole, um, what am I going to do? First, I'm going to uh, place, uh, you know, I'm going to draw a ray that is parallel to the principal axis. It's going to pass through the focus. Then I'm going to have another one that is going to pass through the center of curvature. Oh my God, they're not meeting. Okay, let me try one thing. I'll extend them 
on the opposite side that is on the back of the mirror oh you're doing something wrong no actually i'm doing something right if i extend it to the back of the mirror i'll see that they meet somewhere so when the two rays meet as you know the image is formed there so the image is formed so the image here is going to be enlarged and at the back of the mirror i hope that you have understood this chapter and if you want to more, know more about this chapter that is the uses of concave mirror the images formed by convex mirror and uh, you know all kinds of things then you've got to see my other videos as well and always like and subscribe my videos